Let's see what the second pack has in store for us. I, I do quite like the sort of obsidian uh, or crystallized sort of effect they've got on the Tyranitar. So, he's hoping these 10 are some really good cards so they live up to the promise. interesting. So I've got the other Charmander. Um, I got the obviously special edition uh, in the last pack. That was obviously a special pack that I opened um, as well. And now I've got the regular edition which it's quite cool to have both I've got to say. Um, second I'll turn them over by my side so I can't see what I'm getting beforehand. Hopefully that makes my reactions a bit more interesting to watch. So I've got Ojatini uh, next, which having grown up when Team Rocket um, were in the anime, desperately trying to get a hold of Ojatini because it was the rarest Pokemon in the world to the anime logic that they were using at the time is obviously fanboying significantly right now. Let's see, is there anything... I've got uh, the page on the wiki open to see if there's any cool facts I can get. It's from Pokemon Scarlet. It sheds many layers of skin as it grows larger. During this process it is protected by a rapid waterfall. The little facts they give in the Pokedex are always very interesting. I think they got slightly worse as time went on though. I mean, Magikarp's original one was about the mythology of a coil that can jump over a waterfall or turn into a dragon. You don't see as many of those anymore, which is sad because the thing of mythology and Pokemon is as a history lover and a Pokemon fanatic it's right where I want my entertainment to be. It's perfect for me. What comes next? Basic energy card. Um, not really anything special, I guess. Not much I can talk about with that. Oh, this is cool. Entei. Legendary. The Fire Lion. And that's not Pyro. All the other fire. Uh, there are a lot of fire lions, aren't there? Okay, the original fire lion. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, attack used by your opponent's active Pokemon do 20 less damage before applying weakness and resistance. Is. I don't think pressure is Entei's ability in the games, but apparently it has it in the card. Um, I'm just going to show this again because the shine of it is just to have that sort of finish on a legendary Pokemon is just, I love this card already. It is said that when it rolls the volcano erupts somewhere around the globe. I like that. That's the kind of entry I'm looking for. Sure, is an ability in a Pokemon game that I they can have. Okay, I'm wrong on that one. This card's Pokedex entry comes from Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. That's another one of the games that I have that I haven't yet played. Um, as I mentioned previously, Pokemon Diamond was the game that got me back into Pokemon when I was going through college and I regressed to an earlier version of myself in order to handle the stress of it all. So obviously a remake of the Sinnoh games is it what I was desperate for and have been for many years. But apparently the game reviews are so diabolically bad that people don't want a Unova remake, they don't want Pokemon to remake anything for a long time. So I'm looking forward to playing the remake, but 
I'm also scared of playing the remake. Pray for me when I start actually playing it. Okay, and next we have hmm. Togepi. It's in a very Kanto and Johto mix today. Um, I suppose Togepi counts as both. I mean, it's it's a Johto Pokedex Pokemon, but it was introduced during the original Pokemon series while they were traveling through Kanto. It is considered to be a symbol of good luck. Its shell is said to be filled with happiness. That might be one of the original ones of happiness and... I mean, there is a Pokemon in Japanese which is called happiness. That's Chansey or Blissey. I can just remember which one. But Togepi, and to be honest, it would be really good to have a Togepi if its shell is said to be filled with happiness and it's a symbol of good luck. I might, you know, win a lottery or something, I might be able to put it to good use. Hmm, I'm trying to think of how to use Pokemon for my own benefit. Am I turning into Giovanni from Team Rocket? He's a very rich salary man. I'm fine with that. Level 3. 197. Yay. Searching. This one's a bit shinier than the version on here. But oh, this this entry is from Pokemon Shield. I suppose it hasn't changed much. Whiny voice. Choose a random card from your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals that card and shuffles it into their deck. I'm getting Yu-Gi-Oh flashbacks in a way I don't think I should be. It first appeared on Zorua from Breakthrough. Maybe I'll buy that one next. Just because uh, it's been revealed to me. I just love seeing this. It's so nostalgic, the Pokemon design. I've got a collection of 1996 print Japanese cards that I'm going to get out at some point. They've still got some of the prices on, you know, so the fact that I bought them for like 99p um, or a pound was shocking considering it's very hard to get a hold of any Pokemon cards anymore for, I'd say less than five pounds at this point. What comes next? Another Vulpix. This one's kind of shiny and holographic as well. So it's attacks of combustion and confuse, right? As each child grows, its fur becomes more lustrous. When held, it feels slightly warm. Considering Vulpix is a fox, it kind of it gives you very much house cat vibes when it talks about it like that. I love the little shiny flame decal. Um, looks visible. Uh, I'm looking at the recording, it looks like it's visible. So you should be able to see it as well, but I think it looks amazing. interesting about this Vulpix. That one's from entries from Pokemon Shield as well. There's not been a great deal of trivia to look up, but I'm afraid if I stop looking them up that 
I'm going to pick out a card that's got a really interesting piece of trivia like there's five separate designs and I've got the rarest one and then I completely skip over it and my comment section is a mess as people lambast me for talking randomly about all the little irrelevant trivia of which game the Pokedex entry comes from and then when I finally get something worth talking about I forget to do so. Anyway, let's get on with what comes next. Grumpig. Okay, a ho on Pokemon. Powerful Steps is a very strange name for a Pokemon move. Search a deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like and shuffle your deck. Although in fairness, Grumpig is a sort of it's a dancing kind of Pokemon. It's not a dancer Pokemon, but it's one of those that is sort of supposed to be idly dancing during battle. It can perform odd dance steps to influence foes. Its style of dancing became hugely popular overseas. I feel like that's an insult to overseas idol communities, like a very veiled attack on weebs. No, I'm not taking it personally. I'm not too big on idols. I'm not big on idols at all, actually. Let's see, is this the one that has something interesting? There's nothing, I think, worth talking about there. Let's see what comes next. At the risk of a spoiler, because of how I opened them, I know that at the very bottom of this pile is an Oddish, so if Oddish is your favourite Pokemon, maybe you might want to, and you're watching it just in case I pick out an Oddish, I guess skip to the end of the video, because it's it will be there. Ooh, Malamar, that's a very cool, edgy sort of illustration it's very dark psychic insight once during your turn you may look at the top card of your opponent's deck if you do look at the top card of your deck that sounds like a very in very useful ability you can see what your opponent's getting next and what you're getting next as well that Malamar seems like a very good Pokemon to have in the trading card game. And in the games as well, I'm pretty sure I had one when I when I was playing the Kalos games. It was It was X I played, yeah. It's said that Malamar's hypnotic powers played a role in certain history changing events. Okay, now that is an entry I don't like, because I want to know what the historic events actually were. I love history too much, and I love counterfactual history too. I don't need sleep, I need answers. What was the history changing events Malamar influenced? Back to Johto. Look at Granville. Get a bit closer. Gramble and Snubbull always just look weird to me. Um, although it's popular with young people. Do I count as a young person? I don't think so. No. That, that, maybe that's why it's not popular with me anymore. It was never popular with me. Gramble is timid and sensitive. Really? You want to say a Pokemon that looks like that is timid and sensitive? it's totally incompetent as a watchdog. Now I have a Yorkshire Terrier that is completely competent as a watchdog because it will bark at fresh air. But I also have um, 
a Bijan Poodle mix who's definitely incompetent as a watchdog because he's a bit too friendly and timid so in a weird way he is a, he will be a good Grambo even though my uncle does have a English Bulldog in it he looks a lot better than a Grambo shall we say to try and be diplomatic he's a lot cuter what comes next and Swablu constantly grooms its cotton-like wings. I wonder what a Swablu's wings feel like. I mean, it describes them as cotton-like, but are they soft like cotton or... Like, do they feel like feathers? It takes a shower to clean itself if it becomes dirty. That's a lesson for quite a few of you anime fans out there. So I'll just, that bears repeating. It takes a shower to clean itself if it becomes dirty think about that for a while. Well I've only got one card left so what could it possibly be? Considering I've revealed it's oddish. If I've forgotten or mixed it up I'm going to embarrass myself big time soon. I remember it's an oddish. It's not the most interesting design I think you could give an oddish. Just pretty good. I mean, it looks decent. It looks very nice and everything, but I mean, compare it to Malamar and Malamar just looks that much cooler. So it's got feeling fine, very strange move name which allows you to draw a card. Useful, especially for a unevolved basic Pokemon. During the day it stays in a cold underground to avoid the sun. It grows by bathing in moonlight. So it grows by moonlight. During the day it stays in a cold underground to avoid the sun. It grows by bathing in moonlight. So I think overall I got some pretty good cards there, um, I mean it started really quite well with you know the Charmander, the Kanto starter, one of the most famous Pokemon of all, it means I've got both kinds, it's Entei, looks cool, cool or shiny and silver. Psychic finish, obviously on the Togepi, and the same fire for Vulpix. And I won't show Malamar again, but again, uh, pretty good illustration. Illustrate on Mel now. Well done, man. Congrats. I really think you did well. So I've been to Panimation. He's hoping that was fun and